Well, the U.S. President Donald Trump will convene the G7 meeting via video conference later today. This comes after Trump decided to cancel the in-person meeting of G7 leaders slated to be uh, held at Camp David in June. The video conference will be a follow-up on the meeting held in March to discuss efforts to fight the coronavirus pandemic. But this time, too, the meeting faces the risk of not discussing containment measures. The leaders may instead end up dealing with issues between the U.S. and China. The White House has issued a statement highlighting the agenda for the meeting. Here is the statement, and I quote, Working together, the G7 is taking a whole-of-society approach to tackle the crisis across multiple areas, including health, finance, humanitarian assistance, and science and technology. But there is a lot between the, these lines, and the U.S. President Donald Trump has created new issues to discuss for the group of seven advanced economies since they last met on March 16th. Trump has blocked all U.S. funding due to the World Health Organization. For sure, other leaders will make this an agenda of the meeting. Also, Trump has once again fueled the theory that COVID-19 emerged from a virus lab near the wet market in Wuhan, and he may want to discuss it with other G7 leaders. Now, the G7 consists of the United States, Britain, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, but they may be less enthusiastic as of now. At the last meeting, the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo insisted that the group calls the, call the virus the Wuhan virus. The other leaders rejected this proposition and released a separate statement instead. But the wording of the joint statement was in the hands of this year's presiding power, which is the United States. Trump recently spoke to the Chinese President Xi Jinping. The media did ask Trump if he spoke to the Chinese leader about the likely or origins of the virus. Here's what Trump had to say, and I quote again. I don't want to discuss what I talked to him about uh, the lab. I just don't want to discuss. It's inappropriate right now, he said. Now, the U.S. has not stopped doubling down on China for the outbreak of this pandemic. But the intensity with which it was being carried out has somewhat subsided, with Trump even saying that the U.S. and China need stronger ties during this outbreak. The U.S. has been claiming that the Chinese government has covered up cases during the early stages of the outbreak, thus pushing the entire world into an unprecedented crisis. So far, there are over 2 million confirmed cases worldwide and over 1,35,000 people are dead. Five of the seven members are facing the worst of this crisis, the U.S., Italy, France, Germany and the U.K. The G7 economies make up nearly 40 percent of the global GDP. The virus has not spared these leaders. The U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson himself was released from quarantine just a few days ago. While Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had also gone under self-isolation after his wife tested positive, these leaders may want to know how the virus spread from China without placing any unsavory blame on anyone at the same time. The investigation could begin by looking at the timeline of how the virus in, erupted in China. And on December 10th, the first cases of the strange flu were reported at the Wuhan hospital. Most of these cases were later traced to the Wuhan wet market. On December 31st, China reported the cluster of pneumonia cases of unknown uh, cause to the WHO. In the three weeks, on January 20, 20th, the virus reached the U.S., pushing the country to despair, into despair not seen since the Great Depression. While this may be a significant discovery for uh, historians who set the timeline for the outbreak, the G7 will need to focus on getting the global economy back on track by funding growth in developing countries to increasing humanitarian aid. We'll have to wait and see what transpires at the G7 later today.